Okay, thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. I'm happy to talk about how we can drive economic incentives by uh, data exchange uh, for any industry, but specifically for the agriculture supply chain. Uh, I was already introduced here. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company called Unisot. We are based out in Norway. It's my first time in India, so it's very interesting to be here. Uh, a long experience from uh, enterprise systems like SAP and other uh, ERP systems. And founded the blockchain in Norway. I came to Norway uh, nine, uh, nine years ago. I was trying to find a, a blockchain space there and there was no one, so I had to create it myself. Happy to, to connect with you uh, later on. You can find me on LinkedIn. So, in Unisot, uh, we call it a web free supply chain traceability platform. Uh, so we are enabling companies to, to digitalize, to go from Web 2 to Web 3, or even before Web 2. So even companies today, like a small farmer or a small company, enable them to, to participate in the global supply chains. Our vision is to provide a global interoperability, as it's called, so a global data layer. And this is where we're using the public blockchain to, as a global data layer where every company in the supply chain can securely connect and securely exchange, uh, share the data with, with other actors in the supply chain. For us in Europe, we have a lot of new uh, European regulation that, that forces us to do supply chain sustainability, supply chain traceability, and also digital product passports. So anyone that is planning to export or, or, or work with, do business with Europe, has to follow these uh, European new laws as well. One product is this digital product passport. So when a consumer or anyone in the supply chain is scanning a QR code or an RFID on the product, they get up branding information. That's nothing new. A lot of products today already have a QR code and you come to a static web page more or less rather boring, but what we add to this is that we add the provable information. Because they're using this global blockchain, the public blockchain, as a global data layer, all the information in there can now be proven and can now have every actor are liable for the information that they put in there. So we can present that as provable information, prove every ingredients, prove the origin, prove the temperatures. To that, we are adding functionality for quality feedback. So, like when I arrived this morning with an Uber driver, I could rate the driver one to five, and we can do the same thing with products. So, when I have eaten uh, some food or, or uh, used a product, I can now rate that product one to five and give that information directly back to the producers. And by that, we are creating what we call a communication channel between the producer and the consumer. So, like today, most you, you, you can call a, a customer support line or something, and often that doesn't lead to very much. Maybe you can get some money back at some rebate or something. What we create here is a real communication channel between consumer and, and producer, where they now can exchange information. Consumer can give direct feedback to the producers, so they can be, now be more efficient and, and change their processes to fit the customer's need. And they can also give information back to the customers directly. On top of that, there is functionality for, for loyalty certificates. So if a consumer now really loves this product and they want to support that company or, or, or the workers at that company, they can now donate uh, an amount. And when they are donating this amount, they get a loyalty certificate in, in their app. This loyalty certificate, they can now show for their friends and families and prove that they're actually supporting this farmer or this company. Or it could be a project that this company, the producer is doing, building a school somewhere or, or supporting uh, some other uh, good sort of things. The way this works, as I mentioned, we are using the public blockchain, and this is a big distinction. There is a lot of products out there today that are doing global supply chain traceability, but most of them are centralized systems, a centralized database 
for a private data, but private, so-called private blockchain. We are unique in the way that, that we are using the public blockchain that has been up and running now for soon 15 years, the most secure system in the world, the most scalable system in the world. And by letting every actor in the supply chain, so I'm going to show the supply chain from seed to plate here. So let's say we have a seed producer. When they create the seed, they create something we call a smart digital twin in the blockchain, which means that for the physical product, they create a digital copy in the blockchain, a smart digital twin. To this digital twin, they can add information about the ingredients, the quality, the origin, where it comes from, and so on. And we still need auditors. Blockchain is not a magic system. It's like any database. If you put bad information in, you get bad information out. But the difference is the information that a company puts into the blockchain, they are now digitally signing with, the, with their signature. So they are now liable for that information. And now we can add functionality and make it very efficient for an auditor to come in. They don't have to run to five different companies and, and 10 different systems. They can just go into the system here, verify the information, and make a digital signature on, on the certificate. We can follow the product, continue following out in production. So here we can split and merge. So if you have a batch of product, you can split it up. If you have several different ingredients in a product, you can merge them together. So we can follow the product all the way. We can create product certificates. We can handle uh, customs documentation like bill of lading and so on, invoices. Follow the product all the way out to the end consumer. And this is where the end consumer now can scan this QR code and get this digital product passport up that I was talking about. So by collecting all this information from all the digital twins in the, in the blockchain, we have this provable information. And this is, of course, very useful for recycling and for reuse of products. This creates what we call the 360 global interoperability between all these different actors in a global supply chain. But we, on top of that, we are adding functionality because we are using the public blockchain. We are adding functionality that we call data monetization. So not only giving them the data layer to exchange information, we give them the, we give them the, economic, and we give them the economic incentives to also exchange information. So they can get paid for information. So imagine a, a small farmer, they can now sell their information about the, how much rain it is, the, the quality of the earth, the temperature, things like that. They, they cannot sell that information as nano information, we call it. They can sell like one temperature, they can sell for hundreds of percent. So they can start monetizing all their information and get new revenue streams and make money on their information. So that's the payment layer that the, that the public block enables as well. And to, to get as much company as possible to, to be part of this, we, we have customers today that are just one company in the whole supply chain, and they still have benefit of this because they can prove products. But of course, the more actors in the supply chain that are connected to this kind of system, the more valuable the whole network will be. So to, to make it very easy for any company to, to, to connect to this network, we have mobile applications that we can give to farmers, but we also have a, what we call an integration platform so that we can easily connect into ERP system like SAP or Microsoft or transport systems or IoT systems or something like that. So by enabling a company to connect to the blockchain, then they only need one integration. So my, before I started this company, I worked as an SAP integration architect where I helped company building interfaces to, to their suppliers, to the customers, to the banks, and so on. That worked 15 years ago when you had the same suppliers, the same customers for 10, 20 years. But in this changing world, when you're changing suppliers and customers more often, there is no time and no money to build new specific interfaces. 
So that's why the benefit from the blockchain is that you only need one connection to the blockchain and now you are connected to everybody else that are connected to the blockchain. And by doing that, we enable every company to become a blockchain oracle, which means that they can now publish secure information to other companies that they can use in their smart contracts. One example is uh, a distribution company, for example. When a distribution company has delivered a package, they can put that out on their oracle saying, we delivered this package at that place at that time. Now any other company in the supply chain can read that information and trust it, and they, their smart contract can activate, make a payment, or change ownership, or any other action that has to be done. So this is what I call the smart digital twin. It's often also called in the crypto industry, it's called an NFT. It's a token in the blockchain. We're trying to stay away from the crypto industry, so that's why we call it a, a smart digital twin. But a smart digital twin is actually a digital object in the blockchain where we can add attributes, we can add data, we can add events, and we can have relations to other digital twins. So they can have child twins and they can have parent twins. So we're building a whole DAG network of the whole supply chain. We can have a publish and a subscription functionality because we are combining the blockchain protocol with the new IPv6 internet protocol. And you have the, the automation, of course, the smart contracts that you can uh, activate and, and build to, to uh, create build business processes. All of this functionality is not just for traceability, it's also very useful for, for e-liability, for, for uh, sustainability reporting, like, like scope free and so on. So, the same way we are tracing products, we can trace information about how much energy, how much waste, how much water each company are, are using in the supply chain. And in the end, we can create very specific and exact reports, like, like scope 3 report, EPD report, life cycle assessment reports. Most of these reports today are just estimations not very exact, but with this kind of technology, we can make, make very specific and exact uh, reports. Another interesting thing that we can do is that we can actually, actually distribute AI and make AI more secure, more private, and, and more energy efficient. So by distributing the AI analytics, instead of most are doing today that we are copying a lot of information up to a central AI and, and make the central an, uh, analytics. We distribute it instead. So each actor in the supply chain, they are the analytics on their own data, which means that they keep the data privacy. They don't have to copy a lot of data back and forth. But what they are, what they are sharing with other actors in the supply chain is the learning from that from that analytics. And all of these different learning models, learning results that are coming from each actor, we can now aggregate that and send it back out again to each actor in the supply chain. So now everybody can learn from everybody, but we keep the data privacy. We, we need less bandwidth to send information back and forth. And we can monetize this information. And of course, we, we can also uh, use less energy. We don't need a, a very, very big central AI. We can distribute that, the, the power consumption as well. Another important thing in EU, as I mentioned, there is a lot of new laws. We have this supply chain due diligence law that every company has to do due, do, do due diligence on their suppliers and their suppliers and their suppliers. So, by Using blockchain and, and automation, we can automate that process so that the comp we can take the, the, for example, the top three of, the, your, of your suppliers, analyze them, and then analyze the top three of their suppliers and the top three of their suppliers, which building in a whole network up of, of your supplier, 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 the whole supplier network. We are doing this together with uh, 
uh, a pure accounting company. So, because here is a lot of information that many of your customers or your suppliers don't want to provide information about their suppliers, so there is a middleman. But you can get uh, a due diligence dashboard that will warn you that somewhere down in your supply chain, that could be a company that maybe have child labor or, or slave labor. Now the accounting company or the lawyer company can analyze that and find out if that's the case or not. And we can connect that to other system or we can export and uh, report on that. I've been talking about a lot about agriculture today, but, but these are, we have solutions for all different industries. So we started with based in Norway. So we started with the seafood in Norway, of course. I think everybody knows about Norwegian salmon. We, we have uh, uh, fashion on chains. We are helping company in the fashion industry to prove the clothing, sustainability, quality of the clothing. Halal on chain, wine on chain, kosher on chain, and so on. So all different industries are, are covered in this system. So I think that's it. So you're, ha you're very welcome to contact me. This is my LinkedIn QR code. If you like to contact me, I will be out in the BSV blockchain stand just at the entrance here if you want to talk to me afterwards. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm.